when we hear about the most reliable rocket company, the first name that comes to mind is SpaceX, without a doubt. Over the past 20 years, the company has built its reputation by breaking numerous records and playing a leading role in many important national projects. Yet, despite those incredible achievements, some NASA officials remain skeptical of SpaceX's capabilities, while they tend to overlook the obvious problems of other legacy companies, such as Boeing. This raises a big question of how NASA executes its safety culture. Find out everything in today's episode. It seems that NASA is becoming more and more concerned about safety after a series of issues with its Orion heat shield, the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, and even a recent series of anomalies by SpaceX. This prompted NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel at the October 31st meeting to call on SpaceX to maintain focus on Dragon safety as the company increases its pace of missions. Kent Rominger, a former astronaut who serves on the committee, went through a list of recent issues with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft, which served as a reminder to remain vigilant as the company increases its pace of missions. The mentioned issues include the July Falcon 9 launch failure, when the second stage failed to perform a second burn, grounding the rocket for about two weeks. Another upper stage engine anomaly on the Falcon 9 launch of the Crew-9 mission on September 28th during a deorbit burn also grounded the vehicle, with the exception of one mission, for two weeks. Falcon 9 launches were also briefly halted in August, when a Falcon 9 booster was lost attempting a drone ship landing. When you look at these recent incidents over the last handful of weeks, it does lead one say that it's apparent that operating safely requires significant attention to detail as hardware ages and the pace of operations increases. He concluded, both NASA and SpaceX need to maintain focus on safe crew dragon operations and not take any normal operations for granted. Additionally, his discussion addressed observations with Crew Dragon parachutes on the Crew-8 splashdown on October 25th, such as the lagging behavior where one of four main parachutes opened somewhat slower than the other three, which he noted is within the family of expected performance for the system. Along with concerns, Rominger also endorsed moving Dragon splashdowns from off the Florida coast to near the California coast to better control the re-entry of the Dragon's trunk section pieces of which have survived re-entry on past missions. For some people, ASAP's argument has a point. First and foremost, they did not invent anything. They were not critical of anything. But pointing out a true warning, keep all crew flights safe. This is not something superfluous. It keeps everybody's attention on the most important issue of these flights, safety. ASAP was created by Congress following the 1967 tragedy that killed the three-person crew of the first Apollo mission, Virgil Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. It is the only NASA advisory panel that reports both to the NASA administrator and Congress. Therefore, when a launch company suddenly has a burst of otherwise uncorrelated anomalies, it would not be unfathomable if ASAP's antennae gets twitched. Furthermore, SpaceX is well known for its bold projects beyond any company else, so the company really needs Cerberus watching over its moves, at least compared to ASAP's primary mission, which is to issue a hand-wringing press release every six months. This is one of the milder ones. On the other hand, some suppose that NASA's panel biases SpaceX. At the meeting, the panel also discussed the Starliner crewed test flight, which ended with NASA deciding to leave astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams on the International Space Station and bring back the spacecraft uncrewed. However, they provided no new technical insights into Starliner's thruster problems and helium leaks. Instead, they congratulated NASA and Boeing teams for working tirelessly to do testing and obtain the data necessary for that decision-making. In their own words, this reflects a healthy safety culture. But is it actually true? Let's take a look at reality. Frankly, SpaceX is always incredibly safe when dealing with crew issues. The anomaly ratios of SpaceX rockets launches, based on the number of consecutive launches, are likely lower than those of any other launch platform. As of the 15th of October, 2024, rockets from the Falcon 9 family have been launched 398 times leading the world in the number of launches 
whereas the number of failures counted on the fingers of one hand. The company's vehicles such as Dragon or Falcon are trusted to undertake important national missions. SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which is considered to be the safest and most cost-effective spacecraft ever used by NASA, takes the primal role in shuttling NASA's astronauts to ISS annually. It is also the only U.S. spacecraft capable of doing so since NASA's space shuttles were retired. Think about Dragon's companion, Boeing Starliner, under NASA's commercial crew program. A decade has passed without any operational missions, despite the vehicle initially costing NASA twice as much as SpaceX. Look at the anomalies on Boeing's spacecraft, consistently, over multiple launches. All of them are serious incidents from software errors, issues with the parachute harness, and flammable tape on wiring to propulsive system incidents. Worse, NASA okayed that troubled spacecraft for manned flight anyway and endangered the lives of two people. Well, at this point, it doesn't seem like a really healthy safety culture. After years of development setbacks, weeks of delays because of a spacecraft helium leak, and a final four-day slip caused by a problem with a ground computer, Boeing's CST-100 Starliner commercial crew spacecraft on the 5th of June reached orbit with NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams on board. It can be said how happy the trio of NASA, Boeing, and ULA felt by then. There was an interesting tidbit spread on X that, after a joke during the press conference, ULA's CEO got his tie cut after his first people launch, a tradition usually after a flight director's first launch. However, that would be the last time there were many smiles at a briefing about Starliner. The next day, Starliner docked with the station, but not before experiencing more helium leaks and problems with several of its thrusters. What initially appeared to be a minor issue evolved, over the next three months, into NASA's biggest human spaceflight safety crisis since the shuttle Columbia accident more than two decades ago. Ironically, both NASA and Boeing tried to downplay all of those problems and continuously confirmed that the spacecraft was safe enough to take the crew home, the astronauts, and that the vehicle wasn't stuck on the ISS. Until the truth was increasingly more obvious than ever that Starliner looked like space debris. Rather than a competent vehicle, the national agency finally acknowledged the truth. Then, on September 7th, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft landed safely on Earth in White Sands, New Mexico, ending its return journey with some new propulsion issues. This was indeed a hollow victory because the final and most important testing could not be fully accomplished. Butch and Suni are now still on ISS, waiting for the rescue of Dragon Crew 9 the next February. It should have been the end of the problematic Starliner program, but NASA remains determined to give it another chance to achieve system certification. However, the incompetence of the Boeing spacecraft is off the table. The heavy financial losses in this program forced Boeing to make the decision to sell it. Of course, this is not the first time NASA's safety culture has been in hot water. NASA's safety culture was sharply criticized after the 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger and 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia tragedies, and the agency has made many changes since. The Challenger explosion resulted from a failure to heed engineers' warnings about the O-rings and cold temperatures. Investigations revealed that NASA's culture discouraged dissent and prioritized schedule adherence over safety concerns, leading to a tragic loss of life. Similarly, the Columbia disaster was attributed not only to technical failures, but also to a culture that undervalued safety. The investigation found that NASA's internal communication systems failed to adequately address safety issues raised by engineers, reflecting a systemic problem in risk management. In response to these tragedies, NASA initiated a comprehensive review and transformation of its safety culture. In 2009, NASA established a safety culture program encouraging open communication regarding safety issues and fostering an environment where employees feel safe reporting concerns without fear of repercussions. It includes regular safety culture surveys that allow employees to anonymously share their thoughts on safety practices within the agency.
NASA's safety culture model is built around five essential factors, engaged, flexible, learning, reporting, and just. This framework aims to create an atmosphere where safety is prioritized across all levels of the organization. In addition, NASA has implemented various training programs aimed at reinforcing its commitment to safety. These include courses on safety culture for all employees and specific training for supervisors to ensure they foster a supportive environment. Clearly, the national agency knows what went wrong with them and how to fix it. But in the case of Boeing Starliner, there may be something lurking that prevents them from taking their principles seriously. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.